is the the third the third day of January 2021 the first Sunday the year but of course we're breaking beyond the the barriers of time and space we used we use the time and calendar just because we are in this world okay but we who are called to the true eternal fellowship eternal fellowship with the father and the son do be we, we live beyond the dimension of time and space okay john says that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ okay this is a very deep statement you cannot just you read them by the letters to understand them okay this fellowship with the father and with the son is a fellowship that we are all called into and it is the fellowship in the higher state of consciousness that never fades away it's a fellowship in the higher state of consciousness that is far beyond time and space. It's the fellowship in the spirit. Okay? And when we hear things like Immaculate Conception, the birth of Jesus, Jesus is the Son. Jesus is the one that fellowship with the father and we in the son as the son have access to the father in this eternal fellowship because nobody enters into this fellowship except by the son hence we see again the importance of the son the son of god God so loved the world that he gave his son. The prophet wrote, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Okay, and the angel Gabriel says, You shall conceive, you shall bear a son okay and he is the one this son shall be called jesus and he shall save his people from their sins from their transgression so we we look at the birth of jesus again and remember that the birth of jesus is actually the birth or the appearing or the manifestation of the son of god in you all this is done by faith hearing the word of god and believing this word of god and receiving this word of god so shall you be saved so shall you enter into the fellowship that we have in the godhead the fellowship with the father okay is actually the fellowship that was there in the beginning it is the fellowship that is present even up till now is the is the fellowship that creates this world maintains this world all things are created formulated if you look properly in the creation you will notice that everything has got a touch of the father and the son You have the left and the right. You have the negative and the positive. OK. 
Okay, there's always a two that 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 are actually one. You have the vine and the branches. Okay, I am my father. Look around in creation, everything you see them in twos. Okay, because everything is actually conceived, everything is created out of this fellowship in the Father. Everything declares this fellowship that we have in the Father from the beginning. And this fellowship is the one mentioned in Job when the angels the morning stars the sons of god sang together shouted for joy when they created the world these things are realities that are present it's not a historical thing they are all present right now everything is created by the father through the son and they declare oneness they declare the mystery of the faith everything is nested in the father okay let's quickly turn to the book of first timothy chapter 2 verse 11. first timothy chapter 2 verse 11 i'm going to start 11 to 15. first timothy is a letter to timothy okay It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, not to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Okay, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith, charity, holiness, and sobriety. Now, when you read scriptures like this, know that Paul was speaking in tongues. He was speaking in tongues here. He was speaking a spiritual language that Timothy, his son, could understand. Because if a man reads the scripture, what he will do is to gag up all the women, you know, and tie them up in church. Okay. Tie them up with scarves long gowns and tell them not to say a single word when you gather and of course lots of people do this there are some places where you go to that is forbidden that a woman says a word and all that kind of stuff but this is a spiritual tongue here because Paul is writing about your your salvation the salvation of man okay because that salvation can come only through child bearing okay the woman being the church can only be saved through child bearing meaning that she must bring forth out of her womb the fruit of salvation which is the Christ in you okay and how does she do this by continuing in faith charity love holiness and sobriety because you can see that the child bearing here has got nothing to do with what physical couples do at midnight we're speaking here about something that occurs by faith because the woman is seminated 
impregnated with the word of God by faith, what she hears. She now has to keep it by faith and continue in holiness unto the name of the Lord. In so doing, she will bring forth the one we call Jesus. Okay, that is her salvation. Every man's salvation is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the light. Okay, Jesus. He's the savior of the world. He's actually the Jesus in you that has to come forth out of your womb. Okay, this is a creature that is celestial, a creature that is not born. He's not born of man. He's, a, he's actually the son of God. Many people have argued that uh, Jesus you know whether he was actually uh, whether he actually had um a father or actually it was an allegory that god, god was his father and all. well it doesn't matter what matters is the message what matters is the spiritual interpretation of what occurred in jerusalem years ago which is that a virgin a virgin is one who has divorced herself from the beliefs of this world and who has now dedicated or walked in holiness with the Lord holiness unto the Lord okay that virgin is the one that has received the word of God she has heard from the messenger of God and she now brings forth the fruit of salvation okay and that fruit of salvation is this is that fruit is the salvation for all mankind Every man must birth Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. How many times, how many ways are we going to hear it? That every man must bet Jesus. Because the bet of that Jesus, it, it, which is in your womb, is actually the salvation. There is no other way a man can be saved except he realizes for himself that the, the I within me is Jesus who is actually one with God okay. only with this in this new creation man which like I told you is conceived by faith you heard the word of God you already have Jesus in your womb you already conceived what you have to do now is to allow this seed to grow and come into maturity okay and comfort that's all you don't allow the seed to get aborted have you have you seen a woman who get who have who's who loses a child to abortion and all that all that have all those things are things are all allegories they're all parables a woman who who aborts a child miscarriages and all that all those are parables they have no eternal value whether you have it or you don't have it the real child that you can ever have that is eternal is Jesus that's why it says of his kingdom there shall be no end the government shall be upon his shoulder his name shall be called wonderful counselor the almighty God or the mighty God <laughs> that is the name of the son that is called okay the everlasting father the prince of peace and his kingdom will continue to increase the kingdom has no end and the peace shall have no end and he sits on the throne of David which is the throne of God and you see eternal things only by the spirit the birth of this one that we we now have things that are eternal before now in this world you can have a kingdom any kingdom you have in this world okay anything you have in this world is temporal and nothing you have in this present age actually has the mark of god on it they are all temporal they are all shadows shadows that are passing away but this one that is born in you his kingdom has no end his government has no end it is expanding continuously okay it expands continuously it increases continuously 
and it's a world without end it does not come by demonstration the fact that jesus is birthed in you or born in you does not mean that you have to go outside to walk on waters okay it does not mean that you do things physically for people to see it's your ascension into that state that counts okay god can walk past you now and you might not know it's god okay god does not do things for men to see the kingdom of god is invisible and is present okay it's already there you don't need some kind of sign or wonder to show you that it's there many people hear that some big thing is happening somewhere oh something is do somebody is doing something somewhere oh a prophet is here somewhere a minister is here somewhere and they travel miles and miles in search of an answer but i tell you the answer is your ability to hear get impregnated and birth jesus so doing you enter into this fellowship eternal fellowship in the father in this fellowship there is nothing like death in this fellowship all power i possess all power in heaven and earth must i demonstrate it to men no i do not okay those who will hear will hear it's not by it's not by demonstration okay so we, we get to understand that to enter into this fellowship with the father and with the son we must realize that the old things are passed away the one that is born in you is a new creature it's a celestial creature it's not human it's a holy thing it's son of god not son of man it is almighty god the everlasting father not man so it has got nothing to do with man it's a new creature that comes forth out of your very womb okay it means that you have left the, the things of this world and you have entered into the new a spiritual age okay if you are on top of the mountain you have left life that is upon the earth okay now you remember which i've mentioned a million times when jesus ascends the mountain okay you can see that it's high up on the mountain that you hear this is my beloved son in whom i am pleased now what you are witnessing there is the realm of the son is the consciousness that every man is catapulted or the newborn child is catapulted into is caught up into the throne of god into fellowship with the father this is my son in whom i am well pleased it's a fellowship an eternal fellowship and that is the end of the world that is salvation if you are up there you cannot be down here at the same time you see it's a different world okay in this reality you you perceive things by the spirit you live by the spirit you are working to the dimension of the spirit okay so those things that are down there on the earth become as if they are not that old world that old old world is dissolved and you know it's no more high up in this mountain you now you now live in a dimension that is forever where you possess all power in heaven and on earth okay like i said those of you who have watched a film called the cocoon or if if you have not watched it i would advise you to watch it you will see how the gospel is preached in many ways the cocoon was a film that came out in the 80s i think many years ago and you could see that this old man in one of these care homes 
old people's homes somewhere in America came in contact with aliens from outer space and they were rejuvenated. They tested of youthful vigor. They tested of youthful vigor through their contact with these messengers, these aliens that came from outer space. And they experienced the joy of their youth. You know, if you if you look through the Bible, it speaks about the youth, your youth. You shall return to the days of your youth. Have you seen a child playing? A child does not know what poverty is, what pain is. A child smiles and laughs. A child is not conscious of material of the material world until you teach him. The child is simply is and is, is contented. He's happy. He laughs, he smiles. So you see, the Bible refers to if you read to the old the scripture, the many references, okay. A return to your youth my youth is renewed like the eagle job says you shall return to the days of your youth okay ecclesiastic says remember the days of your youth so these old men through their contact with these aliens from outer space tested of life tested of you know that youthful vigor once more and you know what they wanted more of it and what that man what, what the aliens told them was that if they really wanted more of that they had to leave they had to follow them back to their to their world in outer space meaning they had to leave this present world okay you know some of them you, you notice some of them actually decided to stay while some of them considered how life had treated them how sickness had taken a hold of their body how misery had taken a hold of their body how they were perishing how they were dying away and they decided to follow this messenger back to outer space okay with promises of joy eternal life so they had a choice to remain on earth or to go higher or to leave this earth okay and you know it was quite a battle they had to escape from their family members they had to like do this at night and they had to run away because the people on the earth who didn't have the same vision tried to stop them see but they, they, they had to fight for their liberty and they were taken out of the world into this new reality in likewise manner to taste of life you must actually we must migrate out of the lower places of the earth okay this what these are the things why we see abraham had to leave his father's house he had to leave the earth he had to leave the, that dimension that he had been acquainted to okay even to have this child this promise this bet of a child abraham had to migrate today your migration is to a higher dimension he says follow me follow me and i will show you i will show you the place of life follow me higher come up higher and i'll show you the place of life so you see Today we are reminded that the only way to salvation is through childbearing. Okay, I remember years ago before my mother passed away, she saw visions several times that she had seven kids. So she gave birth to seven kids. And you know, in reality, those seven kids, it was prophetic. I knew at that point in time, but I couldn't get the message across to them. It's prophetic. Seven kids. Okay. It's prophetic for the, the son of light. Seven colors in light. Okay. The seven seven angels, seven messengers, seven trumpets. When you see seven, it's actually a number for perfection, number for light. So it's actually one son, one child. 
one one son who is actually the son of God. Okay, why at times we try to heal our bodies, we try to do things to better our lives. God concentrates on your your ability to bring forth the son, because that is the true enduring salvation. The doctors might mend you for a moment. You might have temporary pride with finances, with all those things, but the true eternal salvation is actually the birthing of Christ in you. Childbearing. The Lord keep you.